Hi, my name is Brian Doherty. I'm from Glasgow in Scotland. This is a short account of the ordeal my family has faced since reporting a paedophile to Police Scotland officers. The Police Scotland have targeted my family, they have lied about my family, they have covered up paedophilia and they have sent an officer to commit perjury against my family, no less, all after we reported um, a paedophile. We are a normal family with four lovely kids. Um, I've had a child who's a girl at 12. My son is five who is autistic. My daughter is four and my other son is a baby not yet one. All of these children were taken from us and put into separate foster homes after we reported a paedophile to Police Scotland. Last summer, towards the end of the summer in August in Scotland in 2014, just outside Fraserburgh, we reported a new neighbour to Police Scotland. This man, Alan Lowe, had offered me £25,000 to have access to my disabled five-year-old son when he discovered my son had communication problems because he is autistic. He made it very clear what he meant by access and I told him to stay away from my child. He repeatedly threatened me after this and um, there was a number of threats and vandalism towards our property. After this, we reported this dangerous paedophile to Police Scotland. Police Scotland officers took the following shameful and incredible actions. Sergeant Buckin of Police Scotland in Fraserburgh made no investigation of this serious matter. Buckin then tried to get me to retract my statement. Um, he then, when this failed, when he failed to persuade us against um, Pursuing this man, he made a report and sent it to social services attacking our children, even though he had not seen them or met any of my children. In other words, Sergeant Buckin, as a promoted officer for Police Scotland, reported my family to social services because my wife and I reported a dangerous paedophile and would not retract her statement from the police. Senior Police Scotland officers were in frequent contact with this paedophile, Alan Lowe, and his titled friend Viscount Petersham on a regular basis. The same Viscount threatened my wife and I that should we tell the police about what Alan Lowe had offered me, he would get social services onto my family. This happened less than two weeks after we reported Lowe to the police. The Viscount must have had contacts in social services um, within Aberdeenshire Council to do this. How does a Viscount know a social work manager, or indeed a man like Alan Lowe, who is an alcoholic seven-fingered builder, or labourer as he is? Police Scotland's litigious report on my family made this attack by social services in Aberdeenshire possible. Without their report, social services could not have done that. The social work manager David O'Neill lied that he had not received our documents which I sent him recorded delivery, which proved the police claims were false and litigious. My wife and I could see the agenda and we booked a week in Ireland to contact her government. After all, who do you contact when the police are the criminals targeting the innocent? Senior police officers then alerted the international police body Interpol, Interpol to locate us as an extreme case where our four kids, well behaved, well mannered, with our two guinea pigs abroad in a holiday home in Ireland for a week, and they used Interpol. What does that say about the disgusting level of corruption? The Scottish police actually lied and misled Interpol, whom I wrote to about this. This wicked corruption must have happened at a very senior level. We also discovered that Police Scotland had reported us missing, when in fact we'd only booked a week's stay abroad. We stayed on in Ireland um, in order to contact the government safely and get away from the threats and danger posed to our children from a paedophile ring who were vandalising our cars and our property, illegally entering our house back in Fraserburgh when we were out and booby trapping the children's bunk beds um, to follow them and the greenhouse in the back garden which fell down on my daughter um, and toys were placed inside it which weren't there the previous night my child's toys were placed inside the greenhouse and when she went to retrieve them, the whole door of the greenhouse fell into her, cutting her. 
To demonstrate just how corrupt the police are in this matter, the police then sent an email to every police station in Ireland to locate our family after we reported a paedophile in Scotland. We were told this by the Irish police who visited, visited our, our family and said they had no concerns. This all happened after we reported a dangerous paedophile who has a titled close friend called Viscount Petersham as his best friend, or a certainly very close friend. These two men hid the fact that they had a relationship and it became very apparent after the Viscount's threat to me and my wife. <clears throat> As I mentioned, my wife and I decided it was too dangerous to return home due to the level of police corruption the paedophiles were protecting. An alleged powerful paedophile ring that we contacted the government about and the power behind many of the attacks on our family. We then sent detailed statements to the British government of this dangerous sexual predator. We also alleged a paedophile ring and reported police and social services corruption and collusion in this matter. The British government passed this information in our statements as a devolved matter to the Scottish government, who incredibly passed this highly sensitive information which included detailed allegations of police corruption to the very same police officers who were responsible for targeting my family. It transpired later in court that the Scottish police actually spent six weeks after they received my information to the government planning and plotting the destruction of my family after <clears throat> they received my documents which we reported serious crime and requested the help of the government the Scottish police were, pr were planning how to destroy my family by liaising with social services and the police in Ireland. This included Police Scotland sending litigious reports to the Irish police as an excuse to, to seize our children. They passed doctored notes and lies about my children to the Irish police and social services as did social services and the Aberdeenshire Council. Our children were taken from us by Irish police officers, four, two of whom were armed and two social workers, six in total, seized our children. Our four lovely kids were taken from us and placed into separate foster homes a number of months after we reported the dangerous paedophile. Not happy with the pain and heartache the police got were causing, they then uh, flew over at taxpayers' expense to Ireland a detective, Sergeant McDougall, uh, who we had never met before, to testify against us, ultimately to have our children placed permanently in care. Um, he testified against the mental health of my wife and I because we reported a paedophile back in Fraserburgh. Is this because you have to be, he called us delusional. He actually called us delusional for a point of paedophile. Is this because you have to be delusional to think that Police Scotland will investigate paedophilia? This agenda driven liar said we were delusional over and over. How he could say this without meeting us before or investigating our complaints or even being remotely qualified in psychiatry speaks volumes for Police Scotland's corruption in this matter. Unfortunately for this liar committing perjury on behalf of Police Scotland, proper qualified professional psychiatrists disagreed entirely with them and stated categorically that we were mentally sound, healthy and we were not delusional. Another psychiatrist we saw was very supportive and condemned the role of social workers in this wicked affair. Interestingly, he commented that paedophiles are attracted to working in social work because of their access to children. Disgustingly, this is not the first case that we have been made aware of where Police Scotland and Aberdeenshire have attacked the mental health of parents. There was another case where a mother reported her disabled child again, disabled child and again in Aberdeenshire, was being abused and the police attacked her mental health and this woman was actually forcibly sectioned. A woman called Anne Gregg, whose daughter Holly Gregg, we've discovered was being abused also. At no point was my wife or I accused of a crime, at no point were we even accused of being bad parents. Even the aggressive social worker in Ireland called Mary Marie, with her brand new British registered car, in court admitted that we were good parents. She told us that her entire department had been cleared to process us as the number one, number one priority. Mary Marie tried to have us sectioned also by priming medical staff repeatedly at Castlebar Hospital 
and a local GP and this was revealed in court within a few days. Social Work in Ireland is headed by a Scot, no less, named Gordon Jays. Jays was the head of education at Stirling Council during the 1996 Dundling Massacre. However, online his CV does not reveal this and states instead that he led the Critical Incident Response Team. It's a useful spin on your CV there, Gordon. He has been accused online of covering up the real truth of the Dundling Massacre and there were many reports he was priming, so this is something that him and his staff are used to, priming council staff during or after the massacre on how to handle the media. We've reported all of this, everything that's happened to Police Scotland and the Scottish Government who have done absolutely nothing to help us and my family. They have washed, washed their hands of us despite us reporting to them these crimes, this corruption, that we've been intimidated, threatened, we've been followed numerous times out in our car, our house has been broken into, our paperwork thrown about, our bed was urinated on, our car tyres and our brakes have been tampered with. These threats have actually increased since we won our court hearing on the 2nd and finally on the 26th of February this year, 2015. People are still watching us now, cars with British registrations, cars with Northern Irish registrations stop outside the house, take photographs and repeatedly come and go and are very, making it very obvious that they are watching us to intimidate us. We are being fought, watched and followed on a daily basis. I'm making this film so that you know the truth about what's happened to a normal family in extremely abnormal circumstances after they reported a paedophile. We believe this could happen to anyone. We were in the wrong place at the wrong time doing the right thing. Our ordeal and the regular attacks on my family is what happens, apparently. When you report a paedophile to Police Scotland, who is best friends with a titled aristocrat, in this case, a man called Viscount Petersham and his paedophile friend, Alan Lowe. Police Scotland attacked us so viciously to discredit us, to therefore undermine everything we said about this paedophile and his titled friend and an alleged powerful paedophile ring. Police Scotland have acted despicably. They have acted criminally and therefore their officers should face criminal charges. David Cameron said in the press a few days after our court victory, that anyone who ignores or covers up paedophilia should face criminal charges. There are therefore a number of senior officers in Police Scotland who should be charged, they should be tried and they should be convicted of aiding and abetting sexually depraved child molesting paedophiles. Now Stephen House, the head of newly formed Police Scotland, has done nothing to protect us and he's fully aware of all the facts surrounding this case. It was only due to the grace of God and the integrity and decency of the judge involved in the district court case in Castlebar, a judge called Judge Mary Devins, that we got our children back. She has been the only person so far who has not acted corruptly in this sordid affair. She ruled that all of our problems started after we reported the paedophile to the police. If this intelligent and decent woman can see the truth and act courageously, why can't the Scottish Government? It was said in court that our correspondence to the government was explosive. I'm making this clip, this video, in the interest of truth and in the interest of hopefully justice and for the safety of the many children out there who are targeted by paedophiles, uh, not least um, my own children and the, the, the terrible ordeal they've been through. I hope that this clip is watched by enough people that it will help children who suffer, just as my family has suffered, due to Police Scotland covering up paedophilia and colluding with paedophiles. Thank you for watching and please pass this on to your friends and your family. Thank you.